8 to 12 age. I've seen two of my children so far go through that age, and I can attest to the fact that, yes, it is the golden age. My childhood, there's no question about it. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful age. I, I grew up in Clayton Park. I went to the bookmobile in the Sobeys parking lot. I spent a lot of time in the Spring Garden Road library staring at the little elevators, you know, the carriage books up and down, thinking, could I fit in one? And, uh, well, one of my characters uh, in Airborne actually does aboard his airship. Um, so it all, you know, it all fed into my imagination as a, as a child. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to be here um, uh, to, to accept this award. This book, Half Brother, had a very uh, long genesis. I, I, it was inspired by two very famous real experiments that were performed on chimpanzees um, in the late 60s and 70s. Um, Nim Chimsky and Washoe. Um, who were cross-fostered as, as humans, brought up to believe they were human so that they could be taught American Sign Language. Uh, NIM, I learned about in first year university taking a linguistics course, and um, I, was, I was immediately struck by how, how strange a story was. Exciting, in a way. It was, it was sort of a, a, a human's first attempt to truly communicate with another species. I mean, really, to be able to imagine what does that animal think? If he could express his thoughts, um, his dreams, his aspirations, I mean, that would truly be an yeah, amazing knowing how to sign with him. And it, when I was a student and I heard the story, it just—it was such a poignant story. Um, not because I was—I I considered myself particularly sentimental about animals, um, but because it seemed like such a betrayal to create expectations in this creature to say you are this thing, this human, and then later to completely overturn it and say, "I'm sorry, you're not." you have to now become this other creature. And uh, it was such a betrayal. And it stayed in my head for 20 years. I, I didn't really think about it until I, I read the obituary of another chimp called Washo, um, who was also taught sign language in the, in the 60s and 70s. She learned 250 signs. Her ending was a little happier. She ended her life in a, in a sanctuary created by the, the scientist. And when I read her obituary about two years ago, it listed her vocabulary, and I read those 250 words, and I thought, could you actually write, is it possible to write a novel with just 250 words? <laughs> and I looked very carefully at this list, um, because it was a beguiling idea as a writer to think, could it be done? And the problem is they're, they're big on nouns, um, not so good on verbs, descriptive language is right out. Um, and I thought, you know, at best it would be, it would be if I tried to do this in 250 words, it would be called, you know, at best, um, you know, um, brave and avant-garde, and at worst, unreadable gibberish. <laughs> but I did, I, I was, I was really taken with the idea at this point of trying to tell a story from the point of view of a young, a young person, a teenager who had an experiment like these ones happening in his own home. Because how bizarre to be an only child your entire life and then have your parents bring home a, a baby chimp. And, um, and to see your parents parent. It's, it's one of the things that I, uh, having three children of my own, um, and one is quite a lot younger than the other two, uh, I realize that my older two are watching me parent. And I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like actually feeling that scrutiny on me. And I feel like sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm not doing such a great job. Sometimes there are failures, and sometimes, no. And Ben Tomlin, the character in my book, gets to see his parents engage in this very bizarre relationship where they're nurturing this baby chimp. Um, telling him they're his parents, uh, telling him they love him, but at the same time exacting something from him. They want data, they want uh, results. Um, so it becomes this very strange, twisted, nurturing yet manipulative relationship. And this is something that Ben witnesses and it, it changes his entire view um, of his family. Um, and so for me the book was not just about animal rights, a lot of people have construed it that way. It is, it is about that. It's, it's about love. It's about how we love each other, how families love how, how children love their, their parents and their siblings, and how parents love um, their children, and sometimes, and sometimes don't do the greatest job at that. Um, so that, that for me was the, uh, became, as I, as I thought about the book and rewrote it, that became for me the, the greatest sort of theme of the book. It's, it's, it, it is a, it's, it's a, a book about love. Um, and I'm very, very happy that you, uh, you recognized it this year. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>
I'm gonna make a note of that actually. <laughs> um, anyway, either they're frightfully discreet, uh, but it has irked me over the years that all the all the books I've checked out from my local branch I've not once been recognized. And uh, actually, no, that's not true. Except for once when I was getting a whole pile of self-help books, and then someone yeah. said, "Are you kidding with all the children's writer?" I said, "Just give me the book." <laughs> was just moving on. Um, this this is really a. a a huge bounty. I'm, I'm incredibly grateful to the committee for um, selecting this. I actually, I've, I've been writer in residence at the Kitchener uh, Public Library, and after the awards were announced in secret, I didn't tell, I promise, not anyone. But I ran into um, one of the committee members, Barb uh, Janicek, and she she told me the rather harrowing news that neither of the committee had, neither of the committees had, had talked to each other until the, the decision was announced. But but when they both realized. Their, their decisions, there was some discussion, at least maybe you can, maybe you can dispel this notion that is it, is, it, is it correct, is it right, maybe we shouldn't give it to both, give both to the book, or, or maybe the book shouldn't get either of them. <laughs> and, uh, I found this very upsetting. So um, I'm very glad that that, that, that wasn't the case. Um, I, I think, I, I'm, I'm delighted the book, um, I, when I write a book, I, I, I honestly am not really thinking of, 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 of an audience, particularly I'm trying to write you know, the best, most uh, intriguing, entertaining book I can. Uh, to me, the fact that the book is considered um, appealing to children and young adults is, is a huge, a huge, huge, huge um, flattering um, uh, recommendation. And um, um, I mean, it was very pleasant. I can, I can only say I'm glad that I, I, I you know, I, I kept in those, those, those few discreet obscenities and the making out sessions <laughs> that, you know, that may have been, you know, taken out were just for, for children. Um, and that was quite fun for me. Um, <laughs> I have nothing more to say. I said all that stuff. I'm, I'm out. I, I can just say thank you, thank you, and, and thank you again. This is this is this is wonderful for me. Thank you. Thank you.